floor of beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. But probably never. However, I sincerely hope that editing me has remembered to put this little bit in black and white so that you don't get to see this until you've watched the film. Because this is, hopefully, another new series that uh, I'm starting on my channel, calling it One Row in a Palette. And I'm absolutely delighted that the first person to join me with this is the ever so beautiful, ever so talented, Jessica. Now, Jessica and I have chosen one row each from the Ace of Beauté Flare palette. I'm trying to get it so you can actually see it. This is what I hate about reflective packaging. I'm trying to get it so you can actually read the damn wording without dazzling you. Maybe that'll do. Okay. We have chosen one row each in the Flare palette to do a look with. And just the row. Nothing else from the palette. Just the row. So, if you would like to see exactly how well we have done, which row I have chosen, and how this looks in glorious Technicolor, then my friend, you are in a precisely the right place. But grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right, you will have seen this in the intro. So let's open it up so I can show you. I mean, like you don't already know what this looks like anyway. Um, this is a collab that I'm doing with Jessica from Stars Hollywood Jessica. So the palette, again, has the same um, design as the outer packet. Nothing on the back of it though, whereas on the back of this packet you do have the ingredients. So if you want to keep a list of the ingredients and the little thingy that tells you it lasts for 12 months once you open it, uh, you have to get the box because I know a lot of people like to get rid of their boxes. I'm, I tend to keep my boxes um, um, unless the box is damaged. I tend to keep the box. So, uh, dust thingy, lovely big mirror in this, and these are the colours. Now, Jessica and I have decided that we are going to start a series between the two of us. We may have other people join in, we don't know yet, but we're starting off the one row in a palette, because if you look at how this palette is designed, you've got sort of warm mauves across the top, and then you've got yellowy oranges and browns across the middle, and then blues and greens across the bottom. So I suggested we did this, and Jessica was like, can I have the bottom row please? And I thought, Okay, fine, no problem. I've done a lot of blue and green looks lately, so I don't mind doing something different. Um, so, now normally, you know, if I see a colour like this, um, let's swipe it there. Normally, you know, if I see a colour like that, I'm going to want to use it. But, I'm actually going to try this middle row here. Because it intrigues me. The bottom row and the middle row both have one shimmer. The top row has two. That one. And that one. But I'm actually going to do the middle row in the palette. Um, my face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. And on my eyes I have... I need to turn this lighting down. It's absolutely washing everything out. It's because it's so, so dark outside. I'm 
just one more. Or is that too much again? No, that's better. Right. This is my Crow and Pebble eye primer that I use. I use the pure white one in cotton. Uh, right, let's get you zoomed in. Now, I'm a teaching channel, so I go through each phase slowly for you. So if you are a complete beginner, you can keep up. Also, because uh, I have chronic pain and sometimes I can't blend as much as I want to. So I have to keep taking breaks. That works fine because every single skill level can follow my tutorial. Whether you are a complete beginner who's never picked up a brush before to an absolute expert, and I am not claiming to be an expert, but it, you know, every single skill level can follow my tutorials. I know it makes my tutorials longer than most people's. I know this means that my channel won't grow as quickly as most people's. But I feel that it's an element that's missing from the, the makeup tutorials that are out there. Right. Now, one thing that I always go through at the start of my films is eye shape. Because I've got deep set eyes. They're also known as double lidded eyes. And I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. So I get transfer of shimmer from the mobile lid to the upper lid. Um, if I'm cutting my crease, I can't just cut the socket, I have to go up onto the upper lid. And even when I use glitter glue, I get a bare patch right through there. But I don't have hooded lids. A lot of people with double lidded eyes, or deep set eyes, are told they have hooded lids, or they mistakenly think they have hooded lids. I'm just going to explain to you the difference. Now, with my brows relaxed, looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. I'm a little bit puffy this morning because my fibro has made everything swell up. Honestly, my feet are so swollen right now. I could not get my usual shoes on yesterday. I've got a pair of shoes that are a little bit too big for me, which I was going to send back. They were the only shoes that fitted me yesterday, so I'm not going to send them back. I'm going to keep hold of them because the intense heat we've had in the UK the last week or so has made my legs swell. Marvellous. Everything's swelling. Except my back balance. <laughs> right, but you can see all of my mobile lid. Okay, can't see much of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if your static upper lid completely covers the lower lid, right down to the lash line, that you have hooded eyes. You can have either a part or a full hooded eye, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. You can still follow my tutorials. <clears throat> All you need to do is get a brush something like this and sketch out on your upper lid where you want your new crease line to fall. So you are creating a mobile lid on your static lid. Yes, this is going to reduce the amount of space between your new crease and your brow, just use slightly smaller brushes than I did when I'm blending. Um, I always put a deeper colour through the crease, so when people are talking to you, obviously they're not going to be right up close like we are right now, when they're talking to you, the fact that you have a deeper colour running through the, your new crease will make it look as if that part of your eye is receding backwards. Okay? Let me show you what deep set eyes alike. If I cover my mobile lid this side and close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid space again that tucks back away. And if I cover my upper lid and do the same, you can see I've got the same above that tucks back away. So that's why deep set eyes have the same issues as hooded lids with the transference of shimmers etc. Alright, so that, my friends, is the difference. Right, I am going to start putting some colour on my face. Specifically, my lids. Um, I think I might start off with this. I really like this tapered blending brush that I got from Boozy Shop. 
it stained it. Um, it's had its usual quick clean, but I think I need to give it a deep clean. But um, there's no colour actually coming off of those bristles, as you can see. It's the only problem with white bristles. I'm just going to have a quick drink, sorry. Silicon, in case you're wondering. Right, I'm going to start off with the shade called Cider and I'm going to... okay it's a little bit dusty in the pan but that does mean you pick up quite a bit on your brush now it doesn't worry me when there's a lot of kick up in pan because you just go back in and pick it back up again next time round now this eye primer I love because it's not sticky and look it hasn't creased even my MAC paint pot used to crease. I tell you, this is by far the absolute best eye primer I've ever used. And I'm not saying that because I have a discount code. I'm saying that because it is the best eye primer I've ever used. Um, they do half size tester pots, which is what I've got here. Uh, and I have already ordered a full size one. They've got six different colours, deepest ones being chocolate and black. So you will find one that works for you but I love it because it's not a sticky base so although I've not set this with any powder because I want the colour to be as bright as possible sometimes you can actually start normally I would have to go in and start tapping colour on like this to set the lid and I wouldn't be able to blend straight away but with this one you can actually get away we're doing a little bit of blending straight off depending on the palette so I love it right so how did I I have done um, a previous collab with Jessica she joined in my photo collab series and then she had an awful lot going on in her own life um, and a lot of other collabs that she was signed up to do I struggle here and here because of deep creasing. Um, I very often have to go back in after I've blended and just tap a bit more pigment on. And I like to leave sort of four or five mils of clear skin at the top just so that my brow highlight shows up nicely. Now I'm not too worried about bringing this all the way down because I'm going to put some more colours on. Um, this side I do have super deep creasing here. Uh, when my eye was pulled around when I was a kid, and I'm talking 40 years ago. Um, so sometimes I do have to actually very, very gently stretch that lid out. Do not pull your lid around unless you absolutely have to. Right, let's get back to talking about Jessica. Um, yeah, so we've, we've only just got around to doing, to organising round two of our um, photo collab. Because as with everybody else, she is loving a series which is it's great for me when you when you create a new series that really intrigues you i'm loving this palette by the way it's the first time i've used it and it's really pigmented and there's not a lot if any fallout at all and i'm not tapping my brush off at all so i'm really impressed with this let's go over and do the same on this side um yeah we've uh, Je jessica's chosen the uh, picture that she wants us to use as inspiration. It's beautiful. It's actually very similar to one that I was going to suggest with her for the first round. So obviously uh, great minds and all that. Uh, but I ended up choosing a different picture for us to start with. Um, actually no, I think this must be round four. Three, four. I think this must be round four because our second one that, that we did was like a Halloween -y picture because Jessica said did I mind doing a Halloween -y one not at Halloween and I'm like no I love Halloween I can do Halloween looks all year round quite happily this must be must be round four. Oh, okay I'm losing this is like a real egg yolky colour I'm loving it really really nice 
in the pan it looks like a mustard yellow. I lift it up. But on the eye it's giving me a really vibrant um, it's giving me a really vibrant bright look. Sorry, I just had to check what that text message was. I'm loving this. Right, I'm gonna clean my brush off on a clean washcloth. And then I'm going to go in with the next shade I'm going to use, which is going to be Pumpkin. Yeah, so, how did I discover Jessica? Well, I started off watching Aniela Kanikvist, and through her I found Paulina. Um, and I, I, I got a bit of a love for Swedish YouTubers in general, to be honest. There's quite a few I watch, to the point that I actually list them in my description box below all the Swedish YouTubers that I follow um, because I've just found that they do such beautiful bright looks which you know me I like I like a bit of colour she says whacking a bright orange colour on her lid but um, I actually discovered Jessica when I put my this is my palette collection up on YouTube. When you put films up as a creator, whatever hashtags you use, you'll suddenly start seeing very similar hashtags or films with sort of similar hashtags coming up in your suggested videos. So I was getting an awful lot of these in my palette collections. Because I, I've, because I've got so many, I, I sort of did the palettes as one film, and um, you know, I did foundations as another, and I haven't even thought about doing the lipsticks yet. I've got way too. I did Jeffrey Star as a separate one. Cause I've got a lot of his. This is what I was saying about sometimes I have to go in and just tap to build the colour back up after I've blended the edges. This is lovely though. Right. Um, yeah, so it, uh, one of the films that was suggested to me came up as, I have 1400 palettes, like 1400, and I'm like, that's, that's got to be a mistype, surely. Surely she means, like, you know, 140, or maybe, maybe 400, not, you know, no, yes, I can had at that point in time 1400 palettes. She's probably got closer to 16 or 1700 now. Um, and I just, the first film that she did, you didn't see her face, you just saw her hands and heard her lovely voice with her beautiful Swedish accent. And um, just going through, and it's I'm one of these people that even my most, most used palettes, unless the, 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 I've created a dimple in one of them because I've used the shade so many times, the palette will look as if it hasn't ever been touched. Because I tidy my palettes up, I clean up any fallout, um, and I try and keep them looking brand new so that every time I pick them up to use, it feels like I'm using a new palette because to me that just I feel more inspired when I see a clean palette rather than one that's you know smudges of colour between the pans and all that sort of thing and dust up on the mirror I'm, and I notice that all of Jessica's ones even ones that you could see she'd actually used, because you could see from the pans that, that she'd actually used them. Um, they still looked really beautiful, just like mine. And I'm like, oh wow, I finally found someone that's, you know, as mad as me about cleaning your palettes. I'm just cleaning this brush off and I'm going to go for a slightly smaller blending brush. And I'm going to go in with hazelnut next. Yeah, you can see what I mean. White brush is just 
they stain so much. Um, yeah, so she'd started off just with this one overview. Uh, I'm going to go in with a Morphe M321 to go into hazelnut. So, oh, that's actually not looking too much different on my viewfinder. I can see the difference in my mirror, but in my viewfinder, not so much. But I will continue. Yes, yeah, so the first one was just a very quick, this is what I've got in this drawer, this is what I've got in this drawer, this is what I've got in this drawer, sort of thing. And then she did a series of ten films where she went through more in depth showing you more of the um, more of the actual palette, you know, little swatchings and bits and pieces. Um, and I watched all of those. And I absolutely loved it. And there's always a risk that when you watch someone a lot, you feel like you know them. And you there's part of you that feels they must know you as well. Because there's times that I've messaged larger creators, one in particular, who was so rude when I asked if they wanted to collab. Just, I'm sorry, I don't do collabs for the sake of it and I don't know you. And I was like, whew, get off your high horse, lovey. Um, you know, there's a much nicer way of saying no thanks. Could have just said, sorry I've not watched enough of your channel yet to see whether, you know, or even just say, sorry I haven't got space in my diary, anything like that. If you go over the edge don't worry because what I'm going to do is, I've got a little pad here with some micellar water on and I tend to just tidy the edges up like that just before I do my foundation so don't worry if you go over the edges too much I'm just I'm really concentrating more on getting the swoop of colour in that I want I keep sitting back and looking at both eyes because obviously both eyes are not symmetrical and you have to try and get the the eye look looking the same so I'm trying to get that curve there that I'm doing looking the same on both eyes this is a beautiful sunset eye, isn't it? Or sunrise eye. It makes me want a cocktail. Like a mimosa or something. Something with pineapple and grenadine and mm, maybe some fresh mango. Mm. Anyway, back to Jessica. Um, and I messaged her just completely, I mean bless her heart, I, obviously I'd left some comments on some of her films just going to clean this brush and go in for a super tiny brush. Um, I'd message, I'd, I'd put quite a few comments on her films and stuff and she'd like them and reply to them. Um, and I messaged her saying, you know, I absolutely love your films, I'd love to collab. Um, and I think I'd also it must have been round about Christmas because I'm sure I put God Yule, um, which is, is Happy Christmas in Swedish, because I made a point of finding out what that was. Do you think I can find one of my tiny blending brushes? I'm just going to continue whittering while I try and find it. Yeah, so I, I messaged her saying, I messaged quite a few Swedish YouTubers actually pretty much all the ones I watch. Um, some of them came back and said I'm really sorry I haven't got space in my um, I haven't got space to fit you in and I'm like no nope, that's absolutely fine thank you so much for getting back to me and all the others came back and said yes so that was bloody awesome uh, I'll go for this one this is a Morphe M562 and I'm going to go into Acorn with this, and this is the one where <clears throat> we're really going to deepen up that crease. 
So if you've created a crease, this is the colour that will give you the, um, the effect of the eye disappearing back in and having a like a shadow. That's why I'm using a super, super fine brush because we don't want it to spread too far up the eye because it's it's meant to be the shadow as the eye disappears back in. I'm going to do tiny circular movements along it just to blend and soften the edges though. Um, yeah, so Jessica came back and said, yes, I'd love to. And I'm like, oh my good, that's amazing. Um, and that's, that's how we started. And I just absolutely love the woman. Love her dog, Gunvald. Hi, Gunvald. Hey. Um, love when he sort of like suddenly pops up behind her because she's recently changed her viewing angle and you'll occasionally see him out on the balcony just sort of like sitting there very proudly just like I love it but although she now works in finance I'm just going to do um, the corner of the eye here just to deepen up this outer edge again this fallout I'll deal with with the micellar pad later um, Although she now works in finance, she is actually a trained makeup artist. So some of the looks she puts together, she makes it look effortless. And they look amazing. They really do look absolutely stunning. Um, and she actually, we were, we were chatting, and I was saying about how you know, I know my films are longer than most people, but when I was first learning, it was so frustrating when they'd speed the blending up or they'd, they'd do one eye and then do the other eye off camera because I'd have to either keep pausing it and then my screen lock would come on because I was watching it on my phone like most people do in the mornings. Um, or I'd have to rewind it and try and copy what they were doing onto the other eye but obviously doing it in mirror image and it was so intimidating when you're first learning and that's why I said if ever I started a channel I was going to make sure that people who were complete beginners would be able to pick up a brush and follow what I was doing. So although that means that yes my channel is still under 600 subscribers even though I've been dying for over a year. Do you know what? I don't mind that because I get I get such lovely comments from people. Um, I get comments from... Um, I got a lovely comment from one woman who said that um, she was losing her eyesight and she and her husband, she'd, she'd come across my channel when she was looking for something else. And she and her husband sat down and it's taught her, my channel has taught her husband how to do her makeup for her so that when she can't see enough to do it anymore, he can do her makeup. I am welling up and I am trying not to cry and failing. But that is, that and that kind of comment, I don't care if I haven't got a thousand subs. I don't care that I'm not earning from my channel. Because getting comments like that, or comments like seeing you deal with your chronic pain and channeling it into doing makeup has encouraged me to get back into doing makeup again. You know, I, I get comments like that, and that means the absolute world to me. Um, and I was saying that to Jessica. And she said, well, even though I'm a trained makeup artist, she said, I've actually picked up some tips from you. And I was like, so what now? She's like, yeah. She said, I've actually picked up some tips from you. And I'm pretty much, I mean, I... My cousin showed me how to do my makeup in the 80s, which, 80s makeup is nothing like the makeup I do now. Um, and then I was pretty much self-taught. I watched a few tutorials on things like cut creases and all that sort of thing. Um, but I've, I've pretty much just gone on to do what I want to do with my face, basically. 
um, so these these tips and tricks are just me thinking right how can I do that easier because I'm blind in this eye so I can't close this eye when I'm doing things so I had to find different ways of doing things like winged liner because I couldn't close my eye you know and just finding little tips and, and tricks and ways to deal with you know so I could still get the same look and obviously the majority of of the big YouTube channels when you look for a tutorial they're in their 20s maybe 30s I'm 45 the skin on my eyelids moves you know I've lost um, 10 11 stone in the last few years so that makes the skin on your eyelids a lot looser as well um, so yeah right I'm gonna stop wittering for the minute I'm going to pause you, I'm going to bung a bit of foundation and face bits and bobs on and I'll be back to finish off this eye look, okay? You will see me instantly, I will see you next time I press the record button. I am back and I suddenly realised I didn't do my eyelids. <sighs> Let's hope I don't get too much fallout from them now that I've done my base because I, I cannot put pa uh, paper, I cannot put powder here to catch it because uh, <laughs> yeah if you're if you're over 25 and you start doing that not a good look right so I'm gonna go in with my chic pro from rolling Langnickel. this is actually their spot concealer but I really like it for it's quite chunky so I'm gonna go into firefly never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush always go in dry, pack the pigment on and then wet it otherwise you'll end up getting hard pan uh, I always dry the ferrule off on my hand as well so that there's no moisture going down and loosening the glue holding the bristles um, and I've got a little mirror so I can look down so I can see what I'm doing this side oh wow look at that hello copper Ooh, you're pretty. This would be such a pretty autumn look or fall, depending on what part of the world you're in. This is such a pretty shade. Reminds me of the um, the Colourpop Jelly Much shadow that I've got. Reminds me of that a lot. That is so pretty. I'm just going to clean and dry the brush off before I go back in and do the same thing on the other eye. Yeah, although you can, people say, oh, it's all right, you just scratch the hard pan off. Yes, you can, but if you continually go into a pressed pigment um, with a wet brush, you will eventually have that hard pan go down through the whole pigment and it will just ruin the whole pigment completely you won't be able to use it if you've got a, a loose pigment it's absolutely fine to go in with a wet brush in fact it's better with a loose pigment oh, I've just got that on my lashes Eek. I have to stretch this lid out here otherwise it sort of fills up those um, creases without actually being pushed down like if I let go see how yeah I really hope that dusts away uh, it's my own fault for forgetting to do it first donut that I am so this is what fibro fog does to you it's just I forgot my own name once I actually I've been married for five years I nearly went to sign my maiden name or something the other day That was fun. Oh, I've got some on my lower lash line now as well. Oopsie. Right, let's clean that off. Let's grab a big old brush and see if I can just smack myself in the face with the... Oh, that's dusted away not too badly. 
Yay! Right. Now, part of the problem with my fibro is that my eyes stream a lot. Add that to hay fever and hot weather and eyeliner. Not happening. But I have found a way to get a similar effect as the winged liner using shadow. So, why do you always get an itchy nose after you've put your foundation on? Right, I'm going to use this flat top brush I showed you earlier. And I'm going to go into acorn. You always go in with the deepest colour that you've used through your crease. Because you're going to join on to that colour there. And just run it along under your bottom lashes. And then you're going to load the brush up and you're just going to stamp right on the edge. So you can see it's almost imperceptible, just that darker stripe there. But when you sit back, can you see how it's changed the shape of my eye? Now, when we blend out and soften this lower lash line, stop there, because if you run it up this bit, you'll lose the whole effect that we've just created. So, same thing this side, link up with the brown, or the deepest shade, obviously, depending on what colour you're doing. Run that along, try and ignore the copper in my waterline, because well, nothing stays in my waterline anyway, so that'll be gone within a matter of... Oh, that went a little bit thick, that side. That's gone a little bit gothic, hasn't it? That's gone a little bit... Hmm. Gonna look a bit green day, actually. Let's just thicken this side up, and then we'll soften them out in a minute. I'm really looking forward to seeing the look that Jessica does with the bottom row. And if you want to have a go at this, if you've got the same palette and you want to choose a row and do your version of the look, if you've got either Insta or Twitter, do please tag one or either of us in it, or both. Or um, I know one lady sent it to me in a private message on Instagram. Um, and that's lovely. I love seeing when people do their version of my eye looks or an eye look that was inspired by something that I've done. Love, love, love seeing those. Um, right, I'm going in with this brush. This is a, it's actually the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl collab, the Swamp Queen palette. But I love it because it's flat topped but it's chunky. A bit like me, chunky. <laughs> right, I'm going to go into Cider, which is that beautiful yellow. I'm just going to run that along that bottom line, bottom row, bottom, oh, for goodness sake, bottom eyelashes. Do you see what I mean about fibro? And I'm just going to gently buff that backwards and forwards, just along that, making sure I stop right here, that I don't go over that bit. Just soften. And you can see, even though it's still a long way down, just adding that extra colour just softens up the I'm in a 90s grunge band look that I've got going on this side. Not that there's anything wrong with that sort of look of course, but it's just not the look I was going for for today. If you want to see me do a sort of grungy, gothy, angsty kind of look, then let me know. Quite happy to do that for you. I really live my 90s when I used a lot of black shadow. Hmm, okay, I like that. Right, I'm going to pause you here and I'm going to do, oh no, I'm going to do some, let's do some highlight first, how about that? Let's, let's bung some highlight on first, shall we? Told you my mind's not with it. Right, I'm going to go in with this, um, this is the Juvia's Place uh, Tribe Highlighter Volume 3 that my friend Kay sent me. 
it's a really lovely soft champagne but I just think it will really pull out the the warm tones that I've got going on on my eye of course if you have a deeper skin tone than me if you're one of my melanin blessed girls and boys in the family then you can choose something like um, Fenty Trophy Wife or the Jeffrey um, oh god what's it called is it Liberace his yellow gold one that he does right okay I'm going to be back after I've put more of this highlighter on my face uh, done some mascara, chosen a lippy and done something with my hair. So, please go nowhere. I will see you immediately. I am back. Uh, I used the Essence Lash Princess in the green top, the mascara and the lip gloss today is Jeffrey's Gloss in wet peach because I thought it would pick up nicely on the colours above. So this is my final look using the middle row of this palette. How do you think I did? Is this a look you'd like to wear? Would you have done it like this or would you have done it slightly differently? I bet you'd remember to put your uh, shimmer on before you decided to do the base, wouldn't you? <laughs> Just goes to show I'm human, I leave the mistakes in. No, not mistakes. Happy little accidents to quote Bob Ross. Uh, the setting spray that I used today was, as ever, my sleigh all day. As you can see, my coconut one is going, 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 going. Um, the coconut is by far my favourite. I find it, I don't know whether it's psychosomatic, but I find it um, more moisturising than the other setting sprays. Because um, I've got combo skin, so I've got oily T zone, but I get dry patches elsewhere, which is a nightmare. But there we go. So, there's my final look. Now, if you're one of my 4F babies, I would like you please now to go across to the beautiful Jessica and watch her one row in a palette, uh, the bottom row to see exactly how she creates a look. But she doesn't forget to do the uh, shimmer before she does her base. If you are new to my channel, however, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you enjoyed it here. Uh, this is probably a pretty good representation of what most of my films are like. Uh, I chat away to you as if you're my mate, sitting on the opposite side of the table with a cup of coffee and we're putting the world to rights. Uh, I hope you enjoy that kind of style. I hope you find it restful, relaxing uh, and, most of all, welcoming. I hope you found the tutorial easy to follow, but most of all, I really hope you'd like to press the subscribe button and stay here with us. If you're unsure, I've got plenty of other films you can watch, in case you need a little bit more time to make your mind up. Either way, I'm just really happy that you came and watched this film with me. So. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is your stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.